Well, again, welcome everyone to our wonderful council, our round square table. Rectangle. Where we, yeah, our rectangle. Where we are discussing uh, joy, joy, not the Thunderdome, <laughs> joy in spite of our circumstance. Last week, we were talking about how there's things more important than life and death. It's about our perspective. Sometimes we think we're the stars of our own show, and it stars us, directed by us, written by us, and really, no, we're, we're just players in a bigger scheme and a bigger thing that's going on. And I just want to mention, um, for starters, I think it's pretty awesome and crazy that uh, it's been one whole week and we're all wearing the exact same thing. That's crazy. We, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. I have a shower. <laughs> it smells horrid. It's it's really bad. Thank God it's this a is a really bad smell. Thank God this is not smell of vision. That just smell the best. <laughs> you smelled the best before we started anyway, so yeah. I don't know, Josh, Please help. Josh has had this here for a whole week. We need to get out of here. He's keeping us captive. <laughs> <laughs> so the question I have is, uh, for those that don't know, on Sunday mornings when youth come into the youth room, we have a question of the day. This one seems very appropriate for the time that we're in. I've noticed this in many family dynamics. In your in families, there's usually one or two pe one of two people living inside your household. One of them I call Team Freakout. They're the ones, they don't want you to even so much as look at someone across the street. They are terrified of getting this virus. They are sanitizing everything, wiping down everything. They don't want you to go swimming. They don't want you to even talk over the phone because talk over the phone might get coronavirus. That's Team Freakout. So again, the other part or the other half of this equation is Team Don't Care. These are the people who think this is also kind of evil government conspiracy. They don't care if they get sick. They're like, it's nothing more than a cold. The flu's killed more people. And they don't care if they go to the beach or whatever. They're the reasons that we have to put everything on lockdown. So my question to you guys as we go around the table is, in your family, who, if anybody, is Team Freak Out versus Team Don't Care? Mackenzie, we'll start with you. Mother. Mother is, is what? Freak out. Mother's freak out. I don't care. And you are don't care. you are part of. Where's your dad in this? Where's dad in this one? Working. Freak out. <laughs> he's he's also part of Team Freak Out. Steven, with your mom behind the camera, who's a member of Team Freak Out versus Team Don't Care. My grandmother is a member of Team Freak Out. <laughs> I mean, she has a right to be. Oh, so she kind of understood as to why she should be on Team Freak Out. Ah, uh, she doesn't go anywhere anyway. So <laughs> there you go. Anyone on Team Don't Care in your household? My whole family. They're on Team Don't Care. Everyone. As evidenced by the fact that you're here and filming. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll be honest. In my immediate household, including also my in-laws, I think we're all members of Team Don't Care. I would say full-on Team Don't Care, but we're closer to them than we are Team Freak Out for sure. I mean, again, if you are if you have preconceived conditions, if you're of a certain age, by all means take proper precautions, and there's no hatred or shame or guilt from, from my camp on that one. you got to take care of yourself. But I don't think we're anywhere near Team Freak Out, though. I'll tell you that. Zay, what about your family? What do you got? Uh, okay, see, for the most part, we're in the realm of really don't care. Except for my sister. Like, a, a hurricane or tropical storm gets announced. She fled to Georgia with my grandmother before. <laughs> but for this, you know, world's ending, oh, no, there's this dangerous virus and all that. She decided she wanted to go to Jenny Springs with her boyfriend over the weekend. <laughs> Is it open? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> it's not. Anyway, Bella, Bella, what about your family? Who's team freak out or whose team don't care? <laughs> Uh, me and my older sister and my little sister were probably don't care. And then my mom and dad are definitely freak out. But my dad has reason to be since he does work at a hospital. He works at a hospital. That would make perfect sense. Again, regardless of what team you're on, there's no judgment here. But yeah, in your family, as you're watching this, ask yourself the question, who's, who's a member of team freak out and who's a, a member of team don't care? So again, this week we're looking at Philippians chapter two. And again, the theme again is joy in spite of circumstance, and now we're talking about attitude. And the verse we're specifically looking at today comes out of Philippians 2, verse 14. I'm going to read that for you right here real quick. It's a very short one, and that is, Do all things without grumbling and disputing. Your translation might also say, Do all things without murmuring and disputing. I am surrounded by students, both in college and high school right now. They have families who love them so dearly. Uh, Initial thoughts on doing things without grumbling and disputing. That's very difficult. Why is it so difficult? Because um, sometimes it's your a parents are really wrong, and then they just don't <laughs> believe that they're wrong, and your parents are always right, but they're wrong. Well, sometimes. Well, well, no, it's a coping mechanism. Think about it. You're in a situation most of the time that you have no control over dealing with authority figures that you may not be agreeing with. 
So no matter what your view is on it, you're, co you're going to have to do as they say. But at least I can, you know, express my right to verbalize my, you know, disagreement with it. That being said, I don't think I can do anything without complaining, even if I enjoy it. Yeah. That's true. It's just fun yeah. to complain. Oh. Some people, uh, that's, a, I think, a good truth there, that some people, we feel sometimes we're hardwired, like we have to complain, we have to fight. But, uh, and I know this may surprise many of you, especially here at the table. Sam is someone who likes to, as they say in the business, they're an instigator. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I had never done anything of that nature in my life. In other words, like, you ever see those that movies place. or cartoons where they, where, like, you'll see, like, a red button on the wall and it says, like, do not press the red button? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tim. And we love him. We love him. But again, do all things about murmuring and disputing. Do all things about grumbling and disputing. And again, context. This guy's writing this from a prison, being mistreated, with at face value, from just the just from the regular sect of the world, there should be no hope, happiness, or joy here. And yet we see throughout this entire book, he's writing about joy, how things bring him joy, how this church brings him joy. And he's talking about the secrets to joy. And he's telling this church to do things without grumbling and disputing. Have you ever heard the phrase before that I, I complained, you know, about my shoes until I met a man who had no feet? No. Have you heard that phrase? You never heard that? You never heard that story before? That's sad to not have feet. Yeah. Yeah, I complained about my shoes until um, I met a man. I don't get it. Just you don't want feet. Shut up. No, <laughs> edit. We're going to have to edit this part. <laughs> but yeah, okay, again, I met a guy who, or no, I said I was upset about my shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Sometimes we have what we call first world problems, right? Like the Wi-Fi goes down. Yeah, the Wi-Fi goes down. What's another first world problem? <laughs> Everybody dies before goes You down. cut your hair by it because you were bored and it became uneven. Yeah. And if you do that right now, there's nothing you could really do to fix it. Because, like, all the barber shops are closed right now. Kenzie, so, don't worry. We can shave your head. <laughs> I don't think Josh knows that I cut my hair. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't notice. I'm a dumb guy. We don't notice hair. We well, really... I mean, you don't have any to notice. So. Th that's also very, very true. So it, it says sometimes that attitude can make you or break you. Uh, describe moments when this was true, guys. An attitude can make you or break you. <sighs> yeah, but can you tell us a tell us a time? <laughs> oh, it's so rude. <laughs> Which one? Pick one. Pick one. <laughs> Okay, so I'll do the most recent one. The other day, me and my mom were arguing because I had one of her shirts on and she doesn't like it when I wear her shirts. And without asking, she's mm. like, if you ask, then you can wear it. But then she gets mad when I wear it. And then, so we were arguing and I was like, I don't get why you're arguing with me over a shirt. And then she was very upset with me. And then so I ended up just taking my shirt off and giving it back to her. And she was like, just wear it. And I was like, then what was the whole point of this argument? I don't understand. But we've also been left in a house together for like three weeks now. So I wanted to Yeah. Die. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes being confined with people you love just makes you want to hug them around the neck. <laughs> All the more. <laughs> shake a little yeah <laughs> nice little love shake right there on your neck yeah exactly uh, uh guys what describe how this attitude can make or break you in so, your life what since, do you got since mckenzie did a frustration one that she was frustrated for mom i'll do a kind one sometimes <laughs> i know i'm such a kind person aren't i sometimes this water is so good <laughs> Sometimes when, like, the Whataburger drive through lady is nice, and you tell her she's nice, they give you free stuff. This is actually, really? yes, this is, can work. Wait, can we go to Whataburger? Yeah. If you, if you <laughs> tell them, it, it has to be a manager. If you tell them they're nice, sometimes they give you a free cookie. Then if you go back the next day, they continue to give you free stuff. <laughs> well, no, I mean, here's the thing. Here's, a, here's an actual phrase that I've heard before, too, and that is you, you attract uh, more flies with honey than you do vinegar. And it's true, when it comes to relationship, when it comes to having things happen good as opposed to negative, sometimes attitude, many times attitude will make or break it. Uh, I had a great relationship with um, the local wing stop here. Steven, you remember that? What happened with the local wing stop, Josh? <laughs> uh, nothing happened, it was wonderful actually. Uh, I lived in Texas for three years, so I was familiar with the wing stop chain when it moved here to Jacksonville. And I just befriended the manager. So how much I love it and how I'm appreciative of it. And then, um, my wings get in like super, super quick. My orders get in super quick. And on top of that, um, I got a t-shirt. Yeah, you did. I, I actually got a t-shirt uh, for yeah. Wingstop. And I love that t-shirt. It's very comfortable. 
But yes, attitude can make you or break you. Another way of this, uh, it's a quote from Henry Ford, and it was this, whether you can or you can't, you're right. Whether you can or you can't, you're right. What, thoughts on this one, guys? Whether you can or you can't, you're right. Well, I mean, go, going into any situation, especially one that you're not looking forward to, mm -hmm. um, the attitude, you, once again, your attitude can make or break you. Whether you can or you can't, you're right. It's one of those, if I can do this, I know I can do this, you go into the, with a determination, no matter how hard or how stressful or irritating it gets, you'll power through. Mm -hmm. But if you go into, well, I can't do this, as soon as you feel the first light, well, yeah, I know I couldn't do that. Anyways, I'm going to go find something else to do. And you give up and just walk away from it. <laughs> Kids, you got something to say about that one or no? I give up way too quick. Hey, don't. You give up. You, you said you give. You said you give up way too quick. Yeah, and, and honestly, we shouldn't. We shouldn't do all things about grumbling and disputing. And again, this is coming from a guy who's being mistreated in a prison. And again, besides, we we focus on first world problems, and these things can ruin our environment. I mean, again, we're Florida kids. We're Florida people here. I mean, this is this is hurricane season. This is a hurricane with electricity. It's actually pretty cool if you really think about it like that. Uh, this is this is this is hurricane season with air conditioning right now. This is this is pretty spectacular. And again, our attitude can determine how we act and react to a situation, how we address a situation, how we can engage a situation. And if all we're doing in our attitude is grumbling and fighting and arguing and looking for just something to go wrong, then, as Henry Ford put it, you're right. This, I'm a, I'm a natural extrovert. I know it's going to surprise you guys. I'm a natural extrovert. Bella, you're with me on this one. This quarantine has been brutal for the extroverts. I mean, it really has because you're telling people who yes. love human interaction to not interact with humans. Like and baby. yeah, and, and it is. It, it can weigh on you. And full confession here, guys, getting ready for this last night. I'm, I'm sitting in my room thinking, like, how am I going to pull through this? How am I going to do this? And, again, there's a layer of irony here because I do I, – there's moments I do feel down. There's moments I do feel like this is never going to end. And the irony is the layers of irony get stacking up. It's like I'm about to present a Bible study about joy in spite of your circumstance. And here's the circumstance. And I was convicted. I have to focus on a better attitude. Attitude's very important. And attitude then will shift you to what we call focus. So again, there's things more important than life or death. You're not the star of the show. When you realize that, your attitude can start to shift. Here's how I'm going to approach things. Here I'm, here's how I'm going to engage things. And the next one up is when our attitude changes, at that point then our focus changes. But that's what we're going to talk about next week. So join us next week as we talk about joy in spite of circumstance and how our focus can help maintain our joy. Bye, everyone.